Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. This is Simiao Li from the University of Nottingham. My presentation focused on the British approaches to deal with the regeneration of industrial heritage and urban development. My presentation will go through the following aspects and illustrate how contextual sensitivity works. Heritage is a sensitive word in the field of architecture and urban design. It brings the coexistence of both limitations and opportunities in practical projects. Arguments arise whenever we try to figure out how to deal with an urban heritage. It's challenging to balance both its historical importance and actual social needs. Industrial heritage is fairly representative of the above mentioned issue. As one of the most fragile heritage kinds, compared with cultural heritage, people tend to be not so deeply nostalgic because of the ongoing development of science and technology. Also, when the land value rises in the background of rapid urbanization, it seems that the only and inevitable destiny of industrial relics is to be replaced and erased. It's good to see that during the past 20 years, a trend of reconsidering the value of industrial heritage begins in the UK, then globally. At the same time, modern cities grow at a rapid speed. It calls for better solution to deal with leftover industrial places. As a result, its once ignored potential regains social attention. Now it's time for us to think about its future. Industries have done almost everything for shaping the physical world. They can be regarded as significant milestones in the history of humanity. To understand the value of industrial heritage, we can learn from the four aspects. From a historical perspective, industry marks the starting point of modern civilization. The process of the revolution and the culture of production can reveal the ambition of human development. The technological and scientific value of industrial heritage refers to skills, knowledge, and experiences from the old generation, and is also irreplaceable in archaeology and education. Then, from a perspective of social community, industrial heritage can create strong and long-lasting emotional attachment with local dwellers. They have established a sense of identity in the memory of people relate with them. It also plays an important role in the modern economic activities during the process of urban transformation. Industrial landscapes and buildings also have unique artistic character. They convey the beauty of industry as a perfect combination of function and form. And this aesthetic value comes from the purity of structure and fabric. The potential of industrial heritage is highly valued in urban regeneration as they provide both tangible and intangible opportunities. Industrial sites can be regarded as a catalyst to enable community engagement, social inclusiveness, and environmental sustainability. Firstly, those sites are the material resource for urban reconstruction. They left adequate flexibility to be adaptable for actual needs. The more to be desired, the more possibility they have. Second, industrial heritage helps in reshaping the place identification, and it can re-establish the interconnection between past and present. Thirdly, industrial heritage has far-reaching influence on economic climate. The economic potential of those sites lays in many relevant aspects, like tourism, real estate, employment, and investment. Then, let's come to the practical part. When thinking about regeneration, there are many different strategies and methods. Among them, organic renewal looks in a rather moderate manner. Organic regeneration was proposed by Professor Wu Liangyong, recommending a suitable scale of development, humane design, coordination of present and future needs. This idea planned to carry out progressively, 
dealing with small-scale urban pieces until they ultimately achieved a relative integrality. It's expecting an outcome of a sustainable strategy to achieve a harmony between old and new urban spatial texture, to create vital urban space and place for residents, and to maintain the cultural context and place identification. It inspires the idea of challenging traditional regeneration method, bottom-up strategy versus top-down strategy, small-scaled construction versus large-scaled construction, progressive process versus overnight ambition, and community-led action versus government-led action. But when facing a practical project, some people began to think, do we really have to make a choice from the two camps? Can they cooperate and how? So here comes the concept of contextual sensitivity as a more comprehensive approach for organic regeneration. The concept of contextual sensitivity was first considered by Professor Tim Heath in the field of architecture and urban design. He stressed the importance of the impact of context to the quality of life, efficiency, and fairness as a rethinking of sustainability. Well, similar concept started quite earlier in the field of urban transportation and infrastructure design. CSS proposed by U.S. Department of Transportation. It mainly focused on balancing the competing needs of many stakeholders in the earliest stage of project development. Later on, the Federal Highway Administration defines CSS as an approach that leads to conserving and enhancing scenic, aesthetic, historic, and community and environmental resources while improving or maintaining safety, mobility, and infrastructure condition. And CSD refers to the design process that considers not only physical aspects or standard specifications of a transportation facility, but also the economic, social, and environmental resources in the community being served by that facility. From the principles we can see how the CSS works as a CSD system. As a problem-led solution, it should start from a shared vision and give full respect to the context. It carried out through continuous communication and collaboration, aiming to add lasting value to the final outcome. The approach should be flexible and creative as well as efficient. Finally, achieving a contextually sustainable result. Borrowing from the transportation concept, I define the contextual sensitivity for industrial heritage through the listing categories. By taking heritage vectors into consideration, this comprehensive system attempts to combine both the bottom-up and top-down action, managing the whole project from a bigger vision while giving enough flexibility for self-regeneration. As we can expect, it should balance environmental, scenic, aesthetic, cultural, and natural resources with community values, heritage preservation, and economic vitality. It should be sustainable and minimize the disruption to the community and environment. The use of resources should be effective and efficient. The design process should open and listen more to the public. And finally, adding lasting value to the community, the environment, and the most importantly, the heritage itself. The actual process of the approach should go from a problem-solving logic through the listing process. Identifying the context, categorizing the situation, evaluating and balancing the strategies from shared visions, responding to actual aspects in detailed action, and finally look back into the outcome and make necessary adjustments. Let's take these four projects to see how contextual sensitivity makes different to the regenerated heritages. Different cities, different heritage types make this project special for their own context. King's Cross Quarter is an important transportation hub. While originally 
It is also a famous industrial site with gas works, drink factories, granaries, and canal docks. Before regenerated, it has a large scaled leftover spaces and factory structures. Spike Island of Bristol is a beautiful yield island inside the River Avon. It was an important port in the history, marking the prosperous of British marine time and has a lot of industrial remains like shipyards, factories, cranes, and warehouses. Jewelry Quarter of Birmingham is a cluster of jewelry handcraft workshops. Combined with city residential area, this site provides a strong sense of community. And the last one, Albert Dock of Liverpool, is a famous enclosed dock area along River Mercy. It is a group of dock factory buildings giving a very interesting structure of physical texture. Due to different context, strategies vary for each project. King's Cross is a mainly government-led project. Design and function of some common spaces are open to public suggestion. For Spike Island, most of the museums and educational buildings and the refurbish of riverside environment are supported by government. Other local resident activities and service functions are community-led. Jewelry Quarter is quite unique. Traditional handcraft industry already has its place and forms its own community and intangible relationship. Government helps to stimulate the city area by inviting some public places. And Albert Dock is a big successful and profit-led project for the government as a heritage tourist attraction site. If we look at the current status of the four sites, each one has its own special characters, and those keywords are specifically sensitive as they respond to the context. King's Cross is focused on the transportation infrastructure, tourism, art and design education, and economic boosting. Spike Island focuses on the marine time culture, history education, environmental revitalization, and residents' daily activity. Jewelry Quarter focuses on the continuity of collective memory and traditional industry workshops, creating a comfortable, peaceful, and livable urban community. Albert Dock focuses on the reuse and adaptivity of heritage buildings and structures, adding more values to the original site as tourist attractions. So we can see that for industrial heritage development projects, after going through the contextual sensitive analysis, has reshaped their own cultural and social identification and is working organically and sustainably in their context. As a conclusion, the theory of contextual sensitivity is proposed based on both preservational and developmental perspective. It is a comprehensive strategy of treating the historical and contemporary context equally and analyze the regeneration potential from environmental, social, cultural, and economic aspects. Through the practical methods, it helps maintaining the self-identification by rediscovering and restoring essential industrial heritage elements. It brings up an organic way to cooperate with the city context, and finally aiming to achieve continuous vitality and sustainability to the site's original layer, even impact a broader city area. If we highlight the whole concept in one sentence, just think contextually, act sensitively, and impact organically. That's the end of my presentation. References and image links are here for anyone interested. Please feel free to email me if any questions, ideas, and discussions. Thank you very much for listening.